All right, so today what I'm going to do is take a little bit of time to validate. So hopefully you can see down here, I'm not blocking, I'll try and sit in a position where I won't block. Uh, that is gonna be things like resistance and capacitance. I'm trying to try and set it both where you can see it on the screen and where I can see it. But uh, I will be looking at my, I'm not gonna do the whole thing here, right? I just wanna show you a little bit of this. You want to have your, um, your schematic and your layout. Now I have the layout printed out, but I don't have the schematic printed out, so I'm gonna pull up both of them. Um, I've shown this before. Hopefully that's, I'm gonna try and put that visible on the, so I'll effectively, I'm gonna be actually be starting, this, this layout is set up this way, so you'll see there's the large capacitor here and there's a large capacitor here. Um, but I'm gonna go through and um, just check every component to, to make it match. Now I could in theory look at the layout, except I'm not great at these bands. I almost always had to keep checking back with the schematic, but I've got both of them so I know, okay, I'm looking here, that goes down to the ground of the foot switch and comes up off of the, you know, the speed pod or whatever. So I'll be able to look at the schematic and the and here and validate. Oh yeah, that is a you know X X resistance capacitor. So or, or sorry X resistance X resistance resistor or capacitance capacitor etc. So I'll have both of these available. Oh now that's going to be tricky. I need to find a place to set this. Hmm. I'll try and set. I'll set it aside because I don't know that I'll need to grab it all the time when I've got the schematic in front of me um, and the schematic is here and I don't know if that's super visible to you uh, it is there you can kind of see it but um, so I'll be able to look here at what I'm looking at and then go from there but like for example right now the foot switch connection comes down off of a one meg resistor so I'll be checking that which is it should be this one right here and I get oops one meg exactly This next one over is also one meg. So, um, uh, the I'm just trying to look. Oh, okay. So I see, like right here, there's a one meg over there, one meg over there, uh, and then in between those two are also a couple of capacitors. So I could switch this to capacitance. Uh, in circuit, capacitance can be very tricky to measure because it, you, you know, it behaves the, the routing for the whole circuit. Oh, it's on diode mode. I'll see if I can get a measurement here. Probably not, but yeah. See, that's so that's saying 21 nanofarads, and that effectively is probably throughout multiple different <laughs> ones in the circuit being kind of bound together. So you usually can't measure those. I'm not too worried because I'll be able to validate those by just looking at the at the schematic, or not the schematic, but the layout diagram of these because these are sized pretty clearly to what they are as well. As you can see, these big guys are the 0.01s. These littler ones are 0.001 or 0.047 or a few others, and then the dark black ones are the uh, even smaller values and, and you can generally look on the sides and see what they're as well so i'll be validating as many ways as i can all of those things but right now i'm just going to go through and do all the resistors so effectively i'm not going to show you all of it but uh, you'll see i'm just going to kind of carefully i validated those two i'll just kind of continue that process by looking at what e each next one will be so for example the grid of this one or i guess i can say the anode of this one is 270k so i measure that Oh, I gotta put it back to resistance. 267, yep, so it's perfect. So again, I'm just gonna go through that process. I don't need to have you guys watching with me, but that is one of the most important things is to go through every single component and validate they look right, and then also to go through every single jumper to connection and make sure that that looks correct as well. So I'll uh, come back after I'm done and the next step really is gonna be for us to be powering this guy on with the, with the rectifier in, but within none of the other tubes yet. Because what I wanna do is just make sure all the voltages seem to be roughly where they're supposed to be on the pins. Now, they'll be higher without the tubes because the um, when the tubes are in, they load the circuit down, and so they'll pull a lot more current, and that actually makes the voltages drop as well. So, But for now, um, that will be just to say, okay, well, I'm expecting about 400 volts here with the power on, and I have 420, that's good. Whereas if I'm expecting 400 volts and I have none, or I have, say, you know, 30 volts or something weird, then i got to look into what's going on because something is obviously wrong. So, uh, all right. We'll come back to you with the next step will be the power on. All right, everybody, I have the light bulb limiter hooked up. I'm going to plug in. I'm gonna have my hand here to switch. I think it should be off, but actually I can test if it's off or on before I do it by setting my this guy on continuity mode. And then you basically touch either end of the switch 
This is a good test of whether you're on or not. You touch either end of the switch and see if you get noise or not. It's on, so I'm going to turn it down and double check again. No continuity. Okay, so we're off and I feel safe. So what I'm going to do is hook up a grounding thing here because I want to quickly also test once it's on. I've got the rectifier tube in, but that's it. Put it on volts DC. And I'm going to plug her in to my light bulb limiter. And uh, i got to undo the cable here. It's going to be... And just make sure we didn't uh, set up something funky here. So, All right. And here we go. Oh, I don't think that's the wrong plug of the limiter. I think it's the bottom one that I've set up. Okay, we have lights. The bulb doesn't even seem to be showing any light, so that's a good sign. And let me just quickly check. DC volts, I've only got one. Oh, now it's warming up, and it's starting to climb quickly. That, that's the rectifier tube coming up. To, so we're up at 200, 300, 370, 370 volts, and everything looks okay. I don't see any smoke, nothing's popping. That's always that pucker moment, the first time you power up an amp, but from what it looks like, my rectifier is good. So what I also like to do quickly is just check voltages in a couple places. Yep, 389. I'm going to move this to where I can see a little bit better. Three ninety. Three ninety. Okay, cool. Um, Three ninety. Okay, so that's looking good. Three eighty nine. Three eighty three. Okay, so we're getting voltages all the way down, uh, and uh, my rectifier is glowing. So we're gonna turn it off, and I'm gonna put in the tubes. And then we will see where we're at with the uh, with things. All right, all my tubes are in. I plugged in an output speaker. Um, although I don't know that it's on the right impedance. Um, this should be set to eight, and I'll need to get a little no knob on there just to be able to switch that. All right. Should be the middle one. So let's go ahead and connect to the ground again here. And we will connect to volts and we're gonna watch the light bulb limiter. Okay, so it came up pretty bright at first, but now it's dimming back down and that's kind of to be expected. Nothing seems to be roasting or smoking. I'm connected to the output speaker, I'm connected to a cable that's not really, that's connected to my guitar. So hopefully we'll start getting a little bit of noise in a minute. Although I think the volumes may all be down, I don't know. Hey, I'm getting output noise by tapping things. That's a good sign. And I'm getting a bit of buzz. All right, so don't see anything smoking. I'm gonna walk over and grab my guitar and see what we hear. Oh, look at that. I hear the sound of guitar strings. That means I have an amplifier. Look at that. Okay, it's very soft, but it's nice. Let's, uh... switch into one of the tremolo inputs. Hmm. All right, so well, at least really quickly, I'm gonna go back to the normal channel and we'll troubleshoot a little bit further probably. Normal channel is coming through. 
That's a very good sign. So it looks like my, something seems to be weird with the tremolo. I'll play with that a little bit, troubleshoot it, and we'll come back. But uh, the amp works. Oh, one thing that's good to check at this point is to check my current coming through the resistor here to ground. So I'm getting 5.25 volts right here. So 5.25 will shut off. Oh, I forget. I don't want to be through the light bulb limiter. It goes, does cause some weird behaviors. So we've confirmed the amp is working. That's part, probably also partly why it's quiet is it's sucking some of the power out of the amp. Um, so let's quickly switch over directly to power that I have over here and then we'll go from there. So let's just quickly do that. And it's very possible things will come out just fine at that point. So give it a whirl. That's why everything was kind of soft too, being that I was at uh, full volume and hearing not a ton out of the amp. I think that the light bulb limiter does reduce the amount of current because of the bulb itself. So, okay, our LED is lit. And this tubes were already warm. So. Oh yeah, that's a lot louder. down a bit. All right, so that's a good sign. Go ahead and plug it into the... Oh, I'm getting a lot of hum out right now. And it's very soft. So all I'm getting on the tremolo channel is hum, but at least at this point, normal channel is good. So. Uh, I will, I'm not gonna have time right now to go through this. I'll probably have to do it a little bit later, but at least I have the amp working. That's great to know. And now I just need to go through this section here, which is the, probably the most complicated part of the circuit. Check voltages on the tubes, make sure those look right. If they don't, then I'll have at least a hint of what may be going off. But uh, that EF86 in phase inverter are in good shape. All right, so we're gonna turn her back on now and see if we can figure out what's going on. I got my chopstick at the ready. I've got my thing here to test voltages. I've looked up what generally the voltages should be. Um, and when I was checking a little bit before, everything looked okay. I get 91 volts there. And you can hear crackling. Um, that's a good sign that I'm getting up, but something is now interrupting or not making things connect all the way. So yeah, 100, 150, 230, 90, and that should be 90 there. Yeah, so all the voltages are looking okay. So let's try and chopstick around a little bit. Chopsticking, of course, the reason you use a chopstick is it's wood and it's not conductive in any significant way that it would get you and jolt you. So I'd like to tap around a little and see if I find spots that pop. Oh, right here. Oh, and I see what's going on already, I think. If I move this, I don't have a good solder connection there. I don't, I don't in fact, I don't think I see solder at all. So my physical connection is kind of there, but not great. But the tone changes. Now, I don't know if that's the only problem. But that's definitely, I'm gonna have to t turn up the soldering iron and solder in those three there because those three look like I missed soldering them. So I'm gonna tap around a little bit as well, just a little bit more to see if I see anything else. This is pretty much where the preamp section ends. All right, so right there, I'm gonna, re I'm gonna solder that together. And the first thing I'm gonna do always, now that I've had power on this, I'm gonna shut it off. And I wanna watch these voltages drop below maybe like 10 volts or so. So I'm gonna keep on the high voltage rail here. I'm already down to one point something volts. So see, we're good. But you always want it. That's one of the most important and, and that's the most dangerous thing at amps people don't realize is that when you're dealing with these, I'm also always keeping one hand out of the amp. But you wanna check these voltages and I'm down to 0.3 volts right now on my high voltage stuff. So this amp is now safe to touch inside because the voltages are down that low. Uh, but, um, so now I know at least one problem is I need to resolder all three of those. Now that one making noise may not be the only thing that's going on there, but I'm going to quickly hook up the soldering iron and get it cranked up to voltage and try and solder that together and see if we can get, get it happy. All right. So effectively, I think that might've done it. So we're going to turn off our soldering iron. 
and plug back in again and we'll give it a try. Oh, I'm gonna adjust some lighting here. I forgot to turn this one on, which gives you guys a little bit better view inside. All right, plugging the power back in to the amp. We'll turn her on, Let's see what we get. See where my volt's at. All right, so that clicky clicky's gone. Still got a decent hum though. It sounds like I'm getting a little more sound out of it now though. It's pretty quiet though. And I'm getting no tremolo. So signal's making it through, but it's weak and we've got a lot of hum. But the oscillation is not happening like it should, or the, you know, the tremolo. I can definitely hear a volume change with the tremolo switch. So here's with it uh, um, on. And with it off, it comes up just a little. So the tremolo circuit itself must then be ob obviously doing something wrong because with it off, I get some weak amplification. And that's at max volume. What I might need to do is get out the oscilloscope at this point. You can either use an oscilloscope or if you make a, like a probe, there's a special kind of probe you can make with a cap in line and then a metal point that you touch at certain points of the signal path to see where the signal may be all of a sudden getting weaker. But I may need to test it, uh, get, an, um, get out my dummy load, get out my oscilloscope and test and see, just kind of probe along until I find the point in the circuit where it is cutting out. But that definitely solved some of the problem because I now have sound because that wasn't well soldered. Um, so the, the next thing that's obvious is that the volume level is really low. So something is kind of accidentally, obviously shunting at least some part of the signal, part of the signal to ground. And with the tremolo on, it's even worse. And adjusting these pots does not impact that tone at all. So we'll uh, have to shut her down for now, hook up the oscilloscope and see what we get. All right. So. You can see over here, I've got a little bit of noise coming in somewhere, but the yellow line is my input. It's just a sine wave coming into the input jack. And what I want to do now with this guy is try to find locations. Oh, it's got a nice little loop in there that's fighting me. Where the signal should be. So, for example, um, the I'm trying to remember the, the main input is to this tube. So, in theory, uh, if I touch there, you see, I'm seeing that signal, right? It's coming in. So that's that's at the input to that pre that preamp tube. I'm not getting a good. There we go. So then it should output through the capacitor to here. Is that the right one? No, I'm not getting it there. I would think it should be right there. Yes, yes. I'm looking at spots where I should have a capacitor that is removing the, the DC and only allowing AC through and not seeing anything. So that's why I'm trying to figure out what's what here. So if I've got the input coming in here and it's there, as you can see, then it should be going out the anode, which is this wire, which comes to here. Now you won't see it before the capacitor usually, but I can still connect to touch there. And as you see, I see nothing. So it's almost like that tube is not sending the signal well. But I could be thinking about this wrong. So um, I definitely have signal coming in. We can see that there at this yellow one. Oh, actually, moving that around has increased my signal. I wonder if I've got a bad 
Interesting. Now my signal just massively went up. On its order of magnitude. Because I jiggled this a little bit. So that makes me think that maybe my soldered connection somewhere there was bad and by wiggling it around I've tightened it up a little, but I'm not sure. So now that makes me want to shut down for a minute, plug back in and see what I hear. If that's the case, I may need to kind of touch up the um, inputs a little bit. So now you should see I have nothing there, but once I start, it warms up and I start playing the guitar, hopefully we will see signal. So that could have meant that basically whatever I did there was removing something that was grounding a good part of the signal. No, nothing there. And again, the part that's confusing to me is if I come to where that should have. Oh, I am getting output there now. Look at that. Okay, so you can see this is the shift network, which is supposed to be after amplification of the signal. Where I got the signal coming right out, it was pretty well magnified. Let's go back to that right here. So this is right out of the output of that tube. That's so big it's filling the whole entire screen. If I come now down to the first phase of the shift network, which is supposed to be taking the output of the combination of these tubes and whatnot, and then shifting it a little bit to create that oscillation, way quieter, like, you know, probably order of magnitude 10 times quieter, but it's there. So my signal's a lot lost. Something is apparently kind of bringing it down uh, in a way that it should. Oop. Can't get a connection on this guy. I can't see what I'm connecting to exactly. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Interesting. That post seems to be moving. Right there. When I was wiggling on it, it was moving. Now it doesn't seem to want to. So now back here, I don't know where this is in the circuit exactly. I'd have to look. That's a different cap. tube is giving a strong signal. What I'm going to probably need to do is stop and take a minute to look at the schematic and think through where points could be that things are going wrong. But I do find that suspicious that when I came to this guy, oops, my ground just came off. It's always startling. I jumped a little bit when you're holding things that are connected to high voltage and to have it pop in your hand, something go pop, it scares the crap out of me every time, even though that was just that. So I'm getting huge amounts of noise on that, but and you can see it kind of ever so slightly changing, but it is. So it's there, just really weak. And that's why stuff that comes in the other channel is so freaking loud right now is so quiet here because I'm getting input, it's strong off that first triode, but somewhere from there it gets muted actually. So what I really need to do is probably figure out what would be the next stage, etc. So from here, it would then go, uh, well, I guess I probably should look at the schematic. Like I said, I'll look at the schematic, I'll get in my head each of the points that I need to probably test to follow it through before we sit down and do some more filming of this, okay? All right, everybody, so playing around with this, I found there is a jumper right here that you can maybe see now that I had missed. On top of that, there is, that is that connected 
the output right here over to the next stage. So that was one thing I was missing. The other thing that was wrong, but not missing, was there was a jumper right down here. And I don't know how visible that's gonna be. Let's try and get that stable. That jumper was there, but it was not soldered and missed soldered. So that was the second soldered part that was missed in my work. And so it wasn't making a connection. As soon as I soldered those two together, boom, I had tremble. So we're gonna give you a demo here in a little bit. Uh, we'll show you, I'm gonna first put this chassis inside of my cabinets that I have for it. And then I will give you a demo of that as well. So the amp is now up, working great and sounds incredible. So I'll let you have a demo here in just a minute. 